Hey everyone, this is Ivan from Yellowfin, and in this video, I'll present some of the key highlights from the 9.5 release. Let's take a look at one of my presentations here. In this release, we have enhanced the image manager to support over 15 popular image formats, including SVG, GIF, and Adobe Photoshop documents. There's no need for conversion. Just simply drag and drop the image file directly into the pop-up and it gets loaded in. The image manager is available everywhere, dashboards and presentations, stories and reports, so you can push high quality graphic designs and animations from different tools directly into Yellowfin. As part of this enhancement, you can also replace image files within the image manager. For example, the logo on this slide should be updated to the new social media one, so let's replace it with the new image file. This action performs a cascading update to all content usage, meaning if this logo was used in other dashboards, presentations, reports, and stories, it will also get replaced there too. Introduced in a previous release, corporate images are assets that cannot be deleted from the platform unless you had to write role access. This is important for governance in regards to images used in production content. In this release, the image type can be changed easily within the image manager from a personal image to a corporate image. This allows you to come back to previously uploaded images and increase the governance without the need to re-upload it as a corporate image. We have also improved saving to PDF for dashboards and presentations. In 9.5, you can now select exactly what you want to be included in a PDF. For multi-tab dashboards, that includes the ability to select specific sub-tabs or the tab you're currently viewing. For presentations, you can also select specific slides to save into PDF. It works off the same system used in printing, so you can say export slides 1 to 3 and 5 to 7 only, like in this example. We have also introduced smart notifications, implemented for PDF exports in this release. These are push style notifications that follow you around Yellowfin, allowing you to go to other areas within the platform and do other things while staying in form of the PDF exports running in the background. These notifications are actionable. You can choose to have the PDF sent to you via email or cancel it altogether. Lastly, they are also stackable, meaning you can export different types of content in quick succession without the need to wait for the previous one to complete first. Let's go to this dashboard and take a look at the improvements for the dashboard canvas. In this release, upon editing a dashboard, the Properties panel immediately shows Canvas options for the sub-tab you are on for quicker configuration. Widgets dragged on a canvas now appear semi-transparent as well, providing better visibility when layering them on top of each other. We have also added the Publish UUID attribute into Code Mode, JavaScript API, and Code Widgets. This attribute is unique and remains the same across edits and migration into other Yelp deployments, enabling developers to reference Canvas widgets in a persistent manner within their code. Last but not least, the reintroduction of visible unit selections on both Canvas and preset dashboard layouts. This allows you to select and display different date parts on time series charts within the dashboard. Now let's go back to this presentation we saw before and edit that. In 9.5, performing text undo and redo with keyboard shortcuts are now synchronized with their respective buttons on the dashboard canvas toolbar. Improvements here include providing a staggered approach similar to the undo and redo actions experienced in popular word processing programs. And for presentations, full screen mode now includes an exit button within the user interface, complementing the existing escape keyboard shortcut. For data discovery, we have introduced new options for cache filters, giving you more control over how these values are populated. It's quite nuanced, so let's take a look at this report, which shows sales metrics by brand and product category. The underlying model in SQL shows the report context where we have a sales fact table joined to several dimension tables. Yellowfin performs these joins on the fly based on the fields dragged within the report builder. The report is also pre-filtered with vendor name set to Diageo Americas. Let's now focus on this product category filter and cache the filter values. This gives us nine values. The number of values here is influenced by both the defined vendor name set to Diageo Americas and a report context. 
The outcome is that you see only product category filter values when there is a sales transaction in a report. Now let's say you wanted to cache all the product category values directly from the dimension table and ignore the report context, regardless of whether that product had a sale. In this release, you can do this simply by clicking on Restrict SQL Context to Filter Columns Only. In this example, every product category had a sale, hence it remains with 9 values. But it can easily increase to the full list based on your scenarios. The second option is to cache all product category values and tell Yellowfin to ignore the other predefined filters. You can toggle this on and the values will increase to 11 in this example, including both Moonshine and Liquids. Effectively caching every product category and ignoring the predefined vendor name filter which was set to DRGO Americas. Let's switch gears from reports built with a standard drag and drop builder to another one built with freehand SQL where developers can write SQL for advanced report authoring. For freehand SQL reports, developers can insert these question mark parameters into the SQL itself to let Yelfin know that these are user prompt filters, allowing report consumers to select filter values within the user interface and then injecting the selected values directly into the SQL at report runtime. In previous versions of Yellowfin, these parameter filters were mandatory meaning report consumers could not omit the filter. In 9.5, these filters are now optional for freehand SQL reports. With this enhancement, this toggle now injects a null value into the filter, and developers now have the capability to write SQL to handle this scenario. In this example, I'm going to change this line here to include the NVL database function, which handles the null value and equates it back to the filter column, which means if it receives a null value, you're effectively not filtering on a column at all. What this means is that developers can now provide more flexibility in filtering when providing freehand SQL reports to report consumers as well. For data prep, we have enhanced table and column metadata caching for views on all data sources, including custom bulk loaders for Snowflake. This greatly improves the speed of navigating between the different areas in Yellowfin data prep. Upon entering the view, you should experience a much snappier experience from data modeling, previewing the underlying SQL, and sampling the data in the model phase, to further shaping and enriching data at the prepare phase. And that's it for the key highlights today. For all other enhancements and improvements in Yellowfin 9.5, you can view the release notes on our website and join the conversation in our community. Don't forget to check out our wiki, blog, and resources page for more information on the Yellowfin suite. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.